and welcome to the 2018 FIA Asia Pacific Rally Championship, where we not only bring you coverage of each of this year's events, but we also celebrate a milestone, the championship's 30th anniversary. First though, we head to New Zealand for round one. Our Aotearoa, translating to Land of the Long White Cloud, is traditionally the opening round of the APRC. And as the teams arrive, they're greeted by perfect weather and road conditions around the Northland region and the host city, Whangarei. With new regulations starting to bring parity for the first time in many years, APRC competitors are able to line up against the cars and drivers in the New Zealand Rally Championship. The New Zealand series has been a leader in the development of new AP4 cars, with seven of the new breed cars lined up on the iconic Te Mato Apoi Bridge in downtown Whangarei prior to the start. The combined field has thrown up some new names, but the practice runs in Friday's shakedown indicate it's going to be a battle between WRC driver Hayden Patton in a Hyundai i20 and fellow New Zealander Mike Young, the first of the Asia-Pacific entrants in the Cusco Racing Toyota Vitz. Patton is looking forward to taking on the mix of good local and international competitors. The competition's going to be tough throughout. Uh, you've got Nathan here in an R5, obviously Michael and, and the Toyota as well, and uh, obviously the New Zealand uh, Championship guys as well. So, um, you know, we can't relax. But for sure, we're going to have to keep a close eye on everyone. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good close competition, which is what we all enjoy, and that's what I'm hoping for as well. Young is happy to have the opportunity to work with Japan's Cusco Racing and TRD to further develop the Vitz, a car he first drove at last year's Rally Hokkaido. After testing and shakedown, he and the team are pleased with the progress. Uh, the feeling of the car is great. Um, it's similar to Hokkaido, obviously a different engine now. We have a two-litre uh, Toyota engine. Uh, it's going good and um, shakedown was a good uh, feeling with the car and hopefully in the rally it goes good as well. It's great to have a lot of competitors here. Um, of course this is my home rally as well and you always want to do well. Uh, it's a little bit hard that we're developing the car, but I'm sure the competition will be tough and it's probably a good chance to have a look where our car is at. Young's Cusco teammate for 2018 is Japanese driver Yuya Sumiyama, the Skoda R5 driver returning to the fast, smooth New Zealand roads for the first time in many years. Hey, Wangari and uh, wonderful being twisting road, uh, but uh, I want to the uh, uh, Skoda uh, coming drive, yeah. But uh, very, very twisty and very high speed, a bit difficult. You have been to Wangarei one time before? One time, yeah, one time, uh, 10 years, uh, 2008, uh, yeah, yeah. So long gap. <laughs> gap, yeah. yeah. Lined up behind the R5 Cusco Skoda is Italian driver Fabio Frigero in an AP4 Peugeot 208. Followed by Fuyuhiko Takahashi from Japan, who loves the New Zealand roads. I, I'd like to enjoy this rally. And Fanga is very beautiful and the course is very, very good. And I, I want to finish Next up in an R5 Ford Fiesta is Nathan Quinn, the current Australian rally champion. Yeah, we definitely pulled a few tricks out of the bag last year. It was an event by event status and uh, yeah, it all worked out for us. One of those rare occasions where all the, all the stars line up. But yeah, we're here this, this rally. We skipped the Targo and to focus on getting a decent budget to come and run here and obviously uh, run as part of the Asia Pacific Championship. The New Zealand Rally Championship is one of the most competitive in the region and Subaru driver Ben Hunt, one of the top contenders, is hoping for a change of luck at this event. The last two years at Whangarei, you know, obviously 16 we had a massive crash and um, last year we had engine problems the, the, the whole weekend and, you know, so we haven't had a, a good run up here. You know, I do love the roads here and, um, you know, yeah, we just want to, you know, finish it and, and enjoy the road. 
Dylan Turner had a fantastic first run in 2017 with his new AP4 Audi Quattro. Wangarei is probably one of my favourite events actually. I think we had that in our 10 questions that, that they asked us. Uh, what's your favourite event? And mine's Wangarei. The camber, the roads, the speed, and then you've got twisty stuff, you know, with just beautiful camber, you can carry so much speed. After some great results in 2017 in an old Group N Subaru, Matt Summerfield has switched to a lightweight Mitsubishi Mirage. Massive step up and, and change of direction from the Impreza. Uh, pretty much every characteristic is different, uh, but going forward, um, the potential for it to be a lot faster than the Subaru is there. It's Emma Gilmore's fourth season in an AP4 Suzuki Swift and she's looking forward to the international competition. That's always what's great about Whangarei is you have the international drivers in amongst it to, to mix it up a bit and uh, we know that the Kiwi guys and, and girls, um, you know, we, we have good speed but um, it's always good to see how we uh, you know, measure up against the internationals. 2018 is the 30th anniversary of the FIA Asia Pacific Rally Championship and Gilmore is one of many drivers who've been part of its rich history. She drove in the 2009 APRC for the Motor Image Subaru team. It's such a unique championship, the events that you do and the conditions that you race in. It's, yeah, there's nothing like it. I mean, we're very lucky in New Zealand, we have amazing roads, but, you know, you go to Asia and, and it's a whole new challenge completely. So I, I would have loved to have uh, I've done more of it. New Zealander Brian Green and John Louis Leiro from New Caledonia have been competing in Asia Pacific events for over 30 years. So what's attracted them to the championship? The good thing with Asia Pacific is you've got such a huge um, variance of, of, of roads and countries. You've got the very steep hills in China and, the, and, and very cold. Um, you've got the warmth of uh, Indonesia when that was in the, uh, uh, in the championship. Um, you've got Japan with the forestry roads. You've got New Caledonia with their very, very good roads. You've got New Zealand with extremely fast ones. Canberra with their mainly forestry roads. It was certainly a great, it certainly is a great championship when you get to see all the variables that you can get in over, over six rounds, that's for sure. Very good experience, uh, particularly uh, Japan, uh, the roads, the first day was terrible, it was raining like hell and terribly uh, slippery and I said uh, to myself and to Rob Scott, who, we, who was my co-driver, if we finish the day we will finish the rally and we finish seven. With Green driving a new Mitsubishi Mirage and Lay Rowe in a Skoda Fabia S2000, there's the potential for a great battle in Whangarei between the two veteran drivers. Uh, when we start an event, it, uh, it is always a competition. <laughs> yes, there always is. We, we normally run reasonably close together. Um, I've already said to him that if I, if I can get my car as close to him during a stage as I am now, I'll be very happy. <laughs> After a traditional Maori welcome and start ceremony in Whangarei, the action begins with two short spectator stages, both won by Padden in his Hyundai i20, giving him a five second overnight lead. Young in the Cusco Toyota is second after the two night stages and one second further back is Quinn in the Fiesta R5. Unfortunately, Le Rose suffers a major blow to his chances of a good finish when his car stops while touring to stage two. The French driver incurs a time penalty, dropping him to the back of the field. But he is still able to restart the following day. Down fast five After the break, the first daylight stage of the rally starts in thick fog, leading to a major incident. The first real stage of the Ineos Rally of Whangarei the following morning starts in dense fog. Number one on the road, Padden has no problems with the limited vision and shows what a world-class driver he is, winning the 30-kilometre stage by a massive 38 seconds. <laughs> 
What's more remarkable is that Patton has a new co-driver for this event, Malcolm Peden stepping into the role since both of Patton's other regular co-drivers are unavailable. Max 7 right, 120, down, fast 5 left, opens on. Next up is young and co-driver Malcolm Reed in their Toyota Vitz. And you can see from their onboard camera how difficult the visibility is. With very little forward vision, driver and co-driver have to be 100% confident and committed to their pace notes. Flat middle crest, 160. Seven right, 100. Seven right plus short. Young is second fastest on stage three, enjoying the light weight of the Toyota compared to the heavier Group N cars that he's rallied in the past. Gilmore leaps up the order in her AP4 Suzuki Swift. She's third fastest for the stage and moves into third overall. Also moving into contention in fourth is Summerfield in the Mitsubishi Mirage. Unfortunately, the Stage 3 competition has stopped when Richie Dalton crashes his Fiesta at high speed, four and a half kilometres into the test. All the following competitors are given assessed times. Eight right plus 320 over flat crest. Young is next to have problems when his steering wheel comes loose near the start of stage four. Steering wheel's come loose. Has it? I, I see what's missing. It's a scary moment and the resulting time loss drops the Cusco driver to sixth. 38 right long, 70. Trying to make up time on stage five, he spins and brushes a bank. Go forward and don't go reverse. It yep. appears to be only a small hit, and Young is unaware that the radiator has been damaged. But a few kilometres later, the Lexus engine expires in a cloud of steam. Young and Reed are forced to retire. Smoke coming out. Right short and seven plus 30. Eight right 50. Summerfield also runs into problems on stage five, losing over 10 minutes with suspension problems. Patton, although first on the road and having to sweep the gravel off the roads for the following competitors, continues to move further ahead through the morning stages. Ben Hunt in a Subaru WRX STI was sixth at the end of stage three after a slow start by his standards. But second fastest times on stage four and five propel him up into second, albeit one minute and 36 seconds behind Patton. After five stages, Gilmer is holding on to third, just two seconds behind Hunt. Slotting into fourth spot is Quinn in the R5 Fiesta, the Australian starting to understand the car and to really enjoy the fast New Zealand roads. Moving up two spots and into fifth is Turner in the AP4 Audi. On stage six, he moves up to fourth after Quinn loses time and drops to sixth with a spin. Only 10 seconds behind Turner and up into fifth is Graham Featherston having a standout drive in an old Mitsubishi Evo 7. Further back in 12th overall is the first of the remaining APRC entrants, Frigero and his Peugeot 208. The Italian is having a great battle with Sumiyama and the Skoda Fabia R5. Only eight seconds separating the two APRC drivers after five stages. Fellow Japanese driver Fuyuhiko Takahashi is 1 minute and 20 seconds behind Sumiyama and sitting 14th. Frigero is a regular entrant in WRC events and Sumiyama is a double Asia Cup champion. 
Bart, along with Takahashi, does struggling here to figure out how best to drive on the fast, cambered roads. I'm not happy as I, as I drive on the road because the road I like so much. Not difficult for the foggy, uh, not difficult for the car because tyre is good, the car is perfect. But I find it difficult to find the rhythm. As I push, I take a lot of risk and I don't, I'm not able to find the, the good rhythm for drive very well. It's uh, difficult roads with the camber, aren't they? I mean, the camber can work for you, but it can actually yeah, bite you too. Yeah, yeah, I understand what is camber, what is the difficulty this morning, because uh, as you move on the road, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's difficult to, to stay on the road. So I understand uh, and uh, I try to learn uh, how, how to drive better. Yeah, it's very, very you know, high speed and uh, very twisty, very difficult. Very high speed. Speed is a bit uh, high, uh, higher than Japan, so so that it, where, where I, I must be braking is uh, I can't do that. Sometimes it was uh, some times. On the second run through the stages, now swept clean of gravel, Haddon continues to power away from the rest of the field. The Hyundai driver also smashing a number of stage records. On the 30 kilometer stage 7, for example, he takes 26 seconds off the previous best ever fastest time, previously held by Oli Christian Vaby in a Skoda R5. With the drier roads, Hunt has taken on a higher profile tyre, hoping to counter the expected tyre wear. While there's little chance of Hunt catching Patton, his times are carrying him further and further ahead of the rest of the field. By stage nine, he's 52 seconds ahead of third place Gilmore. Short five right, keeping narrows. She is really enjoying the progress the team has made with the AP4 Suzuki, but her third place is still under threat from Quinn. Right, right. Now he's had more time in the Fiesta, the Australian's times are regularly in the top three. And by the end of the day, he's just five seconds off a podium spot. Quinn's fourth place has come at Turner's expense. The Audi driver drops to fifth, but is just eight seconds back and looking forward to resuming the battle on day two. Making a strong recovery are the APRC registered drivers. Frigero moves up to eighth, enjoying the roads much more now that they're swept clean of gravel. Improvements to his Peugeot at midday service have also made the car much easier to drive, and the Italian's only problem during the afternoon is a minor off on the final stage, costing him 10 seconds. Even with that time loss, Frigero is the leading competitor in the APRC category, although he leads the second place Sumiyama by just six seconds. Yes, it's a surprise also for me, and, uh, but we are happy. But it is important is to be leader tomorrow evening and not today. At midday service, Sumiyama was 22 seconds behind Frigero, but through the afternoon he's chipped away at the gap and is feeling much happier on the fast-flowing roads. As both drivers gain confidence, it promises to be an interesting battle on day two. Tomorrow, uh, pace up little by little. Yeah. You are getting a little bit more confident on the New Zealand roads. <laughs> um, high speed and uh, twisty, very difficult. Takahashi has moved up the order too finishing the day 13th overall. The Aresti Subaru driver has enjoyed the twisty stages, which are more familiar to him. Uh, not the high speed. Is, uh, usually in Japan, it's uh, twisty and uh, slow, slow speed, so that uh, I can drive well. But high speed is special stage. I have never drive so fast, so that when we are breaking point I don't I don't know Young's Toyota is back at the service park where the Kiwi is philosophical about his retirement just touched a bank and we didn't think much of it just a general spin but unfortunately the radar had a bit of a hole in it so slowly it got hot and hotter and we were just forced to stop 
I guess that's part of developing a car. You find out these things and you find out its weaknesses. And you know, for us, me and Malcolm, we were shocked because it was just a just a spin. You know, you don't expect that you're going to be out of the rally for it. So yeah, it's just part of testing. After the break, we'll take a look back at New Zealand rallying in the 1980s and 90s. New Zealand has been part of the FIA Asia Pacific Rally Championship since it began in 1988. In the 1990s, the APRC ran as part of New Zealand's World Rally Championship round before switching to the Rally of Rotorua in 2001 and then moving north to Whangarei in 2007. New Zealander Rod Millen was the APRC Drivers' Champion in 1989 in a Mazda, followed by the late Possum Bourne, who won the title three times driving a Subaru. Back to the action in the 2018 Rally of Whangarei and it's New Zealand WRC driver Hayden Padden who leads the competitors through the first of the day two tests, the 22 kilometre Waipu Cave stage. The Hyundai driver increases his gap on second place Hunt to 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Quinn is second fastest for this opening stage in his R5 Ford Fiesta and moves up to third. In the Asia-Pacific contest, Sumiyama takes a massive chunk of time off Frigero to take the category lead by 30 seconds. Unfortunately, this is the last scene of third place Takahashi in the rally, the Subaru driver crashing out on stage 13. In the mid-pack, there's a great battle going on for sixth between Josh Marston in a Holden Barina AP4 and Featherston. After fighting his way back to sixth on stage 14, Featherston retires his Mitsubishi Evo 7 on stage 15 with a blown head gasket. Sumiyama in the Cusco Skoda is consistently quicker than his APRC rival Frigero on day two and wins the Asia Pacific category by 1 minute and 49 seconds. In the overall contest for the Ineos International Rally of Whangarei, it's a standout performance from Patton and co-driver Peden. They're fastest on all 18 stages and win by a massive 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, it's been a really good weekend, really enjoyable. Uh, no problems at all and uh, we stuck to our strategy. And it's uh, yeah, great for the team and obviously Mel in the car for the first time. Your car's going really well. I mean, there's a fair development to, to do on it. Yeah, I think we've come a long way with uh, this car and the AP4 Plus regulations over the past sort of 12, 18 months. So I think we're in a good place now. I think we're quite comparable to an R5 car. Obviously, uh, being the perfectionist I am, there's always more for myself and obviously things we can improve on the car. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep trying things. Hunt and Quinn join Patton on the podium to be presented with the Worth Cup and prizes from Worth New Zealand. Next up, it's Asia-Pacific winner Sumiyama, second place Frigero and their co-drivers, who get their turn to spray the champagne. Followed by a photo opportunity for the Cusco team as it celebrates the APRC Teams Award. I am happy. Uh, APRC first finish. Uh, uh, Cusco team and Yokohama Taiga. Uh, they thank you. Uh, but uh, I am uh, but uh, uh, New Zealand road very difficult. Yeah. I am very happy. This afternoon, uh, Suyama was faster than me, and uh, we tried, but uh, was not possible for me. So congratulations to him. Uh, but uh, fortunately, I am happy to be here and to, to be second because it's not it's not nothing. It's uh, it's too much for me. So Patton wins by a massive margin while Hunt gets his wish for a solid finish in Whangarei. Summerfield recovers to ninth after falling to the back of the field on day one, while just outside the top ten is veteran Brian Green in his Mitsubishi Mirage. The APRC Worth Cup points reflect the overall results. Sumiyama and Frigero take their points into the next round, 
the Netia National Capital Rally in Canberra, Australia, where they'll take on the best drivers from the Australian Rally Championship.